friends. Cheers to Sunday. I have my, you can't see it. It's too hot for me to turn around. It says let it snow on the other side of this mug. Actually, I think I showed it in my breakfast montage. Hello? Hi. Do you need help? Hi. No. <laughs> she just wants to hi. say hi. <laughs> it's a unicorn. I'm not an alicorn. Not an alicorn. Because I don't have wings. No wings. Okay. It's a very chilly Sunday here. We woke up. It's negative. My watch says negative eight. The car said negative nine. And that's before wind chill. So it's cold. We did do the um, Dunkin' Donuts drive through for the kiddos. I treat them to donuts and we have donuts Sunday. So I've been working on uh, striking nutritional balance. This is something that's top of mind for me this year and something I've been working actively towards in the last month. And um, it's not that I'm trying to lose weight or look a certain way. I just last 2020, I just flip flopped between really unhealthy eating cycles completely due to stress. It was not because again, for once, it was not because I wanted to look a certain way. It, I literally had no control. I was either not eating at all because I had zero appetite or I was binging because I needed to numb out emotionally. And I just got so tired of it and I tried managing it on my own and I just couldn't strike the right balance. So I invested in a program. I'll probably talk more about it. I'm still kind of testing it out and figuring it out. Um, but it is helping me figure out how to find nutritional balance that's sustainable long term. That's my main goal. Um, and so, for instance, today, I could have gotten a donut. I don't love Dunkin' Donuts, it's not my favorite. So I don't, it's not my top pick. Uh, but I could have easily gotten a donut and that would have been fun. Here's what I've observed. If I start the day out with a donut and then also wanna have brownie later, my brain is like, well, you've already had a donut, so you might as well eat two brownies and ice cream and whipped cream. And by the way, <laughs> there's chocolate in the cupboard, so let's have some of that too. You know, like, this, so this is just my way of trying to recalibrate my brain. I'll report back if it feels like the thing to do. People are so funny about this sort of stuff. Um, and I feel like I have to approach it very carefully, but I, in, in just how I share it. But I also just am like over tiptoeing around things. Like I just don't. Just because somebody might get upset, I'm just like, eh, I don't really want to tiptoe around things. Hey, baby. Anyway, that's how we're starting the day. I'm gonna look through some catalogs and have my chai tea and uh, have a nice relaxing Sunday morning with my little, my little cuties. Yeah, Valentine time, huh? Yeah, with our lunch. I'm yeah. having um, the last of my instant pot lentil soup. It's so good with some leftover broccoli in it and some toast with some leftover guacamole on it. I love leftovers for lunch. It's like the best thing ever. The kids, surprise, surprise, are having peanut butter jelly. Hummus, cucumbers, and grapes. I tried really hard to get us excited about other lunch options. I keep trying every once in a while, not all at once because it's overwhelming. Tried with the salami sandwiches. It didn't didn't go over well. We tried, right, Cece? We tried, mm -hmm. but uh, peanut butter jelly it is. So we just go with it. It's fine. Also, I'm a little obsessed with this exterior. I really want to work on our our backyard and you know, like the outside of our house this year if I can swing it. I just, this is like my vibe totally, this is Pottery Barn catalog, of course, but I really like this. And have this big slatty things and the furniture, I like it all. Is it recording? <laughs> We're 
having a group, a group cuddle uh, session. You know, every once in a while, like daily, we just all lie on the kitchen floor and Winnie's. <laughs> she looks thrilled. Oh, she's bailing! Oh no! Almost. 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 Okay. And this is why I clean my kitchen at an obsessive level. I wanted to give you a better look at this page because this is, this is my fantasy. I don't know if this will happen and I love my house and if nothing else happens, like if I don't change any other thing with it for the next 20 years, that's fine. You know, like I'm not going to complain. But that doesn't mean that I can't have some dreams for it. And this picture is my dream of what the back of the house would look like. I don't know how doable this would be. But I would love to have a outdoor fireplace or like a built-in fire pit, something more substantial. The back, our backyard is really like a clean slate. It's, there's a lot of space to work with and not a lot there. Um, I do have some plans or some landscapey kinds of things that I want to do this year that seem a bit more important, that are a bit more practical, but I would love to redo the exterior of the house it's just not something i have to do like it's not some it's not a necessity so we'll see we'll see it's just one of those things but i firmly believe that uh, especially as a homebody and a major introvert my home is my palace like it's my palace and it's my safe place and it is where i spend the majority of my time and putting um you know love and care and maintaining it of course is important but also having dreams for it i think is important like i said even if i never achieve quite this um i love this vibe and i would love it for this house so i'll keep you posted if that um you know manifests hey we're gonna do a little laundry time um and chat for a second Donnie just went down for his nap. That kid naps harder than any other. I mean, I only have one other kid. And she's, she just is one. You know how some kids need a lot of sleep and some kids just don't? Cece's one of those kids, excuse me for a second, that just does not need a lot of sleep. Which I understand because I don't need a ton of sleep either. And I never, like, was a big sleep in kid or anything like that or even an adult I still wake up at between four and five a.m. on the weekends but that's because I want to have my uninterrupted me time in the morning and I am willing to wake up for it um let's fold some things so she napped and stuff definitely when she was still this age when she, and he only just turned three like a week ago but um, she never slept that long or like that deeply. Donnie sleeps long and deeply. I wake him up just to keep him on a schedule so he gets solid sleep at night. Um, I don't, if I let him sleep, I don't know if he'd wake up before five. I wake him up usually around 2.45 every day, but um, he would definitely, and I have to wake him up and he is still really sleeping. So maybe he's one of those kids that needs a bit more sleep. It's interesting how that follows. Anyway, so he's down for his nap. And he tells me too, when we get close to nap time, he's going, I'm tired. That's what he says, so cute. He's like, I'm tired. Cece's having her quiet time she wanted to play with ponies so that's what she's doing she's having quiet time in her room i remember being five and playing with ponies in my room my little ponies they're like the same i mean they're not quite the same because they've changed them they look less like horses and more like you know the alien style um animals that men Toy manufacturers make like with the really big heads and eyes. Like what? What are they preparing our children for? But anyway, okay. but still, it's like it's a little. I don't know the way toys are now. The eyes and the heads just keep getting bigger and bigger on the baby dolls and the animals and all the figurines and every. I'm like, why? Why? Why can't I look like a real animal and still be cute? 
What did I want? To, I felt like I wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, yes. So I have a little time. Cece might come popping out when she gets bored with that, and that's fine. Um, but I think I'm going to do the yoga with Adrian. There's a new free yoga practice out today. And usually I do my yoga with Adrian right after I wake up in the morning because it's very slow and gentle and just gets my body feeling like awake and fluid and moving for the day. But it was too long. It's like a 50 plus minute practice, which she usually doesn't post those. She usually posts like 20 to 30 minute practices or even shorter. Uh, and I, I didn't, I didn't have an, that much time to dedicate to that this morning. So I think I'm going to try to do that now, which will be really nice. And, um, we've just been having a nice day. I, it's been, we stay in our PJs usually on Sundays. Um, especially if we're not going anywhere, which we're not. I drove the kids through the Dunkin' Donuts drive through but nobody got out of the car or out of their PJs. Um, I did shower out of my workout clothes, but I put on some, really like these sweatpants. They were from Target a while ago. And this was from Target a few years ago, and I just I love this shirt. Um, so yeah, it's real cozy vibes. I even have, <laughs> it's so cold out it is. It's not cold in the house, but still, I have my leggings on under my sweatpants. I'm like holding my leg up in the air. Um, if you see, if you're like looking at that pile and stuff, and like, what is that? These are vinyls. These are like underwear covers. Like you put them over. When you're potty training, you put them over kids' undies, and they just, so they can still be wearing, like, regular undies, but it stops it from getting everywhere when they have an accident. And we're kind of out of that phase now. It's, you know, it's been a process between the pandemic and just having separate households with the kids now. It's, potty training has definitely been different than it was with CC, and also he's a boy and he's a different child, but, um, it's all good. It's all good. I just, I never, I don't feel the need to rush. I don't feel the need to rush things or force things. Um, I know there's a strategy for that and some people swear by it and it works fine for them. That's just not what works for me. And my, my kids probably would adapt to anything that works for me, but what they adapt to best is what I'm most comfortable with because they pick up on those feelings. But yeah, I'm gonna do my yoga. We did, what else did we do that I didn't show you? We read a lot of stories today. The kids played a lot with their stuffies. Um, we did more, they've been working on Play-Doh. Right before lunch we were doing Play-Doh. Yeah, we've just been having fun around the house and I love it. I will say though, it is nice to get outside once a day it is um, just warming up to a balmy two degrees. That's not considering wind chill. And it's 1.30. <laughs> it's two degrees. So yeah, we're just not, we're not going out on that. We're just not, it's frostbite central. Um, and they haven't, if they asked, like I would totally bundle us up and we would do the whole backyard bit and just do it for as long as we could and then run into the house. But neither of them has, mentioned it or shown any interest and I'm just like yeah let's avoid the frostbite toes and fingers that's a good idea but yeah I do like getting us outside so there's a part of me that is like oh it'll be nice when it's spring and summer again and we can go to the playground and, and play play more outside and stuff but another part of me just loves winter so much and I'm still at the time of year where I love it I love I'm like a total winter person December through February even part of March I'll take it but halfway through or like St. Patrick's Day mm, I'm ready for spring it's never spring here but I'm ready for it this is mainly for editing me just so I don't have to get up out of my chair in the office and come look at what brand this is stars above from Target they're so cozy they're really warm I could not cut these things off they like wouldn't come off Oh, you know what? They might have loosened up with time. I should try that again. Um, yeah, I'm ready. We'll see if I can get through the practice uninterrupted. But even if Cece comes in, it's fun because she'll just do it next to me. I got my little yogi pup here. Hi. It's a weenie. We just woke up. We're no still way. a little bit asleep. And we're checking out the... Um, my mom told us there's a new Snoopy show on Apple TV. 
So we're checking it out. This is a commercial for something else. For a bunch of other things. Oh, that was Snoopy. Yeah? Let's see. I snaw Snoopy. You, you snaw Snoopy? <laughs> oh, there's Snoopy. Oh, cute. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, that's Winnie's least favorite noise. I think we like the Snoopy show. That noise just reminded me that today is the Super Bowl. We don't watch the football around here. Nothing against it, but if um, I'm not going to in independently put it on. So I'm doing a thing that the internet said is okay to do, which does not always mean it's a good idea to do it, but I'm monitoring the situation, and I just really wanted to try it. Because my firewood, I've mentioned this somewhere at some point, I bought another quarter, half? Quarter or half face cord, now I can't remember, like a month ago, and it's damp from winter, being outside during the winter. I store my wood in my garage in, 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 where it's dry, but it's damp wherever it was stored, where I bought it from. And it's just been so hard to light, and I'm like, how do you, it takes months to dry out wood, usually. Well, you can do it in small batches in a 218 degree oven. So I'm trying it. I'm just like praying that the house does not light on fire, but I'm keeping my eye closely on it. And normally my pizza stone lives in the oven full time, regardless of what I'm making. And it is just, it's gross. I didn't think you were supposed to clean the pizza stone, but I just was like, hey, it's out of the oven. I'm doing some other weird thing I found on the internet. Why not do that too? So I'm going to follow these directions to clean the pizza stone. So you don't submerge it in water. You scrape off what you can with a plastic spatula so as to not damage the stone. And then you make a paste out of equal parts baking soda and water. Scrub it on with a stiff brush and I actually have a, an extra one that I could dedicate just to pizza stone scrubbing from here on out. And then you wipe it clean and it doesn't affect the stone or contaminate any future food. We're gonna give that a try. Sushi Sunday, and this just came to the mail from from the Amazon to the mail. <laughs> Violet bent backwards over the grass by Lana Del Rey, who I'm not hip with the times, you guys, but she's I know she's a, a singer, right? Actress, singer. Anyway, she wrote a book of poetry, and I bought this because I saw this quote on one of the van lifers I follow on Instagram, Christian. Schaefer, is that her name? Anyway, I really liked the poem, and um, it made me want to buy the whole book. So I was like, okay, because I love reading just like a snippet, like a few pages of poetry before bed. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to do in my little nighttime routine. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is, this. This is the page. You can have a life beyond your wildest dreams. All you have to do is change everything. I like that a lot. So the wood's been in at 200 degrees for about 40 minutes, and I know it's working, because whenever I open the oven, you see the condensation coming out? It's steam it's releasing, and I've been checking it every five minutes. And it's okay. So I'm going to leave it in for the full hour, as the internet suggested, and then um, put in another load. I just want to make sure I always do it when I'm in the kitchen. That seems prudent. But hopefully I can dry out all the rest of my wood for this season, this week, so it's ready for burning. This DoorDash, which is just what I usually use, and I'm so grateful. I'm like This is one of those little things that I'm just so grateful for that our favorite local sushi restaurant and we used to go there like weekly it we haven't been to eat there in a very long time almost a year but um that they 
our do delivery through the DoorDash app because it's just me, obviously, here with the kids, and I'm happy to pay the delivery fee and tip the driver to save me from trying to go pick up dinner with the kids in the car, and then what do you do? Do you bring them in? Do you, you can't leave them in the car for you in a second in this era without like people calling Child Protective Services on you. I'm not saying you should leave your children in the car, but you know, I mean, there's just, what are you supposed to do is my question. So I'm gonna show you, uh, anyway, I'm grateful for the um, delivery. I'm gonna show you what we get. So we get miso soup, I get three of them because I love miso soup and the kids actually really like it too. They probably between the two of them eat one whole one but they get all of the tofu out of all three because that's their favorite part. So we have three miso soups, we got edamame to share and between the three of us we'll finish that. The kids really like this soft shell crab, I, I do not but they like it. The kids like tuna avocado roll and I asked them to roll it with the seaweed on the outside. Um, and they will eat like a little more than half of that and I will eat the rest. If I don't eat it today, I'll eat it tomorrow. And then I like this roll, which is called the Ocean Drive. And I'm trying to show you without ruining it. It looks like that. It's got different kinds of fish in it. I, I don't know, but it has cilantro and it's a little spicy. And I like it a lot. So I'm gonna plate this up and then we will eat. Sushi Sunday is served. Look at that, smorgasbord. I, I go fancy with my plating. <laughs> no, I do go fancy with theirs though. So. We've got our soy sauce and little dishes. Crab, yummy. Here's the now dried, clean. <laughs> Pizza stone, it does feel a lot cleaner. You can see where the baking soda worked at some of the crustier spots. And I'm very happy with it. I just wanted to get the crunchy stuff off and it worked great. So that technique, I'll link that. It was like from kitchen.com. I'll link where I got the tutorial from, pretty easy. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap it here for today. Um, yeah, another good weekend day with my chiclets and um, just around the house and doing some stuff and, oh, you know, what is life these days? Uh, on the one hand, like, yeah, I wish I had some different content to show you, but this is life right now. And I'm guessing this is life for a lot of people. This mitten doesn't look exactly like mine, but I mean, it's you're doing the same sorts of things day in, day out. Because we still have to be so careful, and that's just the way of it. But I will say this, I am feeling... Okay, I was like a little bit of a sad sack for January. I was just in my feelings, and I needed to be in my feelings. And I feel, I felt for the past week, like basically since we shifted into February, myself like very slowly lifting out of that. And I can tell I am because I'm getting back into my bullet journal. I'm scheduling, like I'm making lists for my days. Um, I'm doing little projects like cleaning the pizza stone, drying the wood in the, in the oven, like little things like that. They might seem really silly, but to me those are actually really big positive um, indications that my mood is lifting and my and I know it is because my interest in doing those sorts of things is coming back. And there's a lot of like admin stuff I have to get done just for life, taxes, like health insurance, I gotta figure that. Like there's all this like grown up stuff that I really don't want to do and I've been putting off for the past month. And I'm like, we're gonna hit it head on. We're gonna do it this week. I'm gonna get it all wrapped up this week, this upcoming week. I'm gonna get my taxes sorted. I'm gonna get the health insurance sorted um, and there's like I have a list of things I'd like to do around the house little things that scale up into bigger things so that's good I think we all go through seasons and I think this is um, 
It's important to embrace in not only others, but ourselves. I think, yeah, we can be pretty critical of other people, but we can be, I, in my experience at least, I'm the most critical of myself by far. And that's saying something because there are a lot of people who are very critical of me for whatever reason, um, which is fine, whatever. That really has nothing to do with me. That's really 100% about them. Anybody who's super critical of you, it's completely 100% and there is no ifs, ands, or buts about this. It is 100% them deflecting their own issues that they're triggered on. It's not about you at all. Anyway, yeah. I can get down on myself, like really down and be like, oh, you should be more productive. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. We should be getting our life in order. We should be do you know what? Sometimes you just got to be a sad sack and move through that and let yourself come through it. Because if you don't, and I know this, if I don't let myself go through those things and instead I try to pack them down and pack them away, oh baby, is that going to explode in, in my face at some point? unexpectedly it with huge repercussions as opposed to if I just let myself process whatever the thing is at the time naturally and be loving and gentle with myself but also encourage myself to move through it with patience and care and loving kindness much better no exploding <laughs> none of that but anyway, yeah, I'm excited that I feel this lift. I'm starting to get that spring cleaning itch. It's just starting to tingle. So I'll probably be doing another series. In the past, I've called it spring fever. I feel like it's so hard to put the word fever in anything anymore because now we just think of the virus. So I don't know what to, if I should rename it to something else or not, but I feel it coming. Not the COVID, but the you know, the cleaning, the cleaning bug is coming. I feel it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are well, and I'll talk to you real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.